I had a really great question uh, from our audience and specifically Kate who posed the question in our Infinite Tools group, which I will link in the description. And she asked if we had any examples of images that were more moody and darker and um, had more contrast to them. And I thought this was a good time to also talk about and show you how it would work in this situation. And I have two images here that she supplied and we'll go through both of these here in a minute. So effectively, um, Infinite Skin, I personally like using it after the healing process is done. And the purpose of the tool is in order for you to mitigate or minimize the amount of time you spend retouching. Now, the healing process is something that is necessary to do to remove any blemishes on the skin. But we have this tool to help you with the skin softening effect without trying to manipulate or, or adjust the natural anatomy of the face. And I feel like a lot of plugins typically do that. And so that's why we came out with Infinite Skin to give you control over both tone and softness as well as the, the texture and sharpness of the skin. So with that being said, let me just go and jump into it and I'll show you an example of how Infinite Skin works if you didn't do any healing work as well. But for this instance, I'm gonna go and emulate the fact that I did some healing work here, just some of the blemishes on the skin. Just very quickly, it's not perfect, but you get the idea. Next, what I wanna do is um, I typically would, you know, um, if you wanna start out cautiously, then what you wanna do is click on the light setting. And what the light setting does is it ensures the clarity is high. The clarity is the texture of the skin. So it's gonna keep pretty much all the texture and minimize it a little bit. Um, the smoothing it will keep to a minimum and what that means is basically how much smoothing you want on the skin so texture high smoothing low okay i'm gonna hit create and then once i hit create what i'm actually going to do here is use the standard brush tool and i'm going to have a white brush and i'm going to have my flow set to 100. and just really quickly i'm going to go ahead and uh, paint over just some areas of the skin for a second. You're going to see it not do a lot. You're going to see it do it very minimally. But then we're going to adjust our slider to have more and more of an impact as we continue on. Okay, so something like that for now. And let me turn this layer or group on and off for a second. I'm going to also go ahead and uh, walk through these settings for a second. I'm going to turn this off here. This is almost like a protect your highlights um, section, but I don't want to protect the highlights. I kind of want to smooth the highlights as well. I'm so turning that off. I also have this on here. And what that is, is my black mask button. And uh, when I hit create, it actually generated a black mask attached to the group. And so when I painted on the black mask with my white brush, I was able to manually paint in where I wanted infinite skin to be brought in. So that's why I had my black mask option on and I started painting with a white brush. Okay, now that's done, I'm gonna turn this group on and off and you can see here that it does smooth, but does it really subtly. And you know, for most images, that actually might not be a bad idea, like that might be enough. However, in this particular instance, maybe you want something a little bit more. What you can do, number one, is you can start by reducing the clarity. If you find it too sharp or too texture, textural, so to speak, then that's where huh, this slider comes into play. You can see here it kind of also tapers down that overly textured skin, which actually now matches with the rest of the body, which is so great because apparently you can control the texture different from the tone or the colors of the skin. So in case you don't want to tweak those too much, you don't have to. But if you want to smooth out the actual blotchiness of the colors, what you can then do is increase the smoothness. And this how you go in the smoothing, if I push this left and right, you can see here, if you just look at the image, that it actually smooths out the colors too. So for this particular instance, I just like going back and forth and seeing what it's doing. It seems like for me here, having something in the middle like this seems to be pretty good. If you're looking for a default setting for it, you just click medium and it does the work for you. And then you always have to just kind of brush things in and then use that as the standard meeting point. So there you go. That's how to kind of do that there. Another thing I get asked is, what happens if you want to actually do two separate areas? Oh, that's actually a really nice difference. Um, so a couple of core things I had in mind is, 
You can obviously use this group to start brushing in things really gently, like maybe you want to bring in a little bit of that body work as well. I can use my white brush and just slowly with a low flow paint over some of the other areas if you want. That's one way to do it. Um, or, you know, if you, for example, maybe you want less in some areas, then you can just use a black brush and then paint away maybe like the highlights you thought it was too far. You can paint that back. Makes it super easy to control the amount and frequency. Another thing that you can do is if you go in and right click on the create button, it's going to turn that group into a solid layer like that. And then step number two is hit the create button again, and it's going to create a second group for you so that you can specifically paint in um, a different area with a different setting. Like if you want it now to paint in just the body and then dictate, oh, I want actually to keep all the clarity because, you know, it was already kind of out of focus to begin with and then increase the smoothing accordingly. Okay. What it will not do for you, well, it's not going to adjust luminosity issues. So for example, maybe, you know, the cheeks are too bright or the shadows are too dark, anything like that's not going to lift them up or something. So you still have to, you know, do a little bit of dodge and burn if you want. So if you're familiar with dodge and burn, I would go in here at this point and, um, you know, do a little bit of dodge and burn work. Like for example, I see this area is a little bit too bright. Just brush that in. Maybe, you know, the, the chin, I want to kind of do a little bit of that. But the ultimate effect here, the overall effect is so that it lessens the time that you spend doing this part of the process. Okay, so there you have it. Um, let's actually go to our other image, but I'm going to finish this up really quick here. I want to just see what it looks like. There you go. And that looks so much better already. And, you know, ultimately, this is designed to, like, a, like we said earlier, to mitigate the process, make the retouching time quicker. Um, so you can see here, it softens up that texture nicely, while still matching the rest of the, the body, you know, it doesn't look out of place, it doesn't look like you did anything really to it. Um, and you can de decide how much you want. And that's the benefit of having all in one inside Photoshop. Okay, so for the next image here, um, same kind of principle. You know, I had some healing work done um, and then I would run the infant skin. But in this instance, what I'm going to do here is keep it set to light. And then I'll hit create. And then once that part is done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same things. I'm going to actually brush in a specific areas. So perhaps I, you know, don't want it applied everywhere and you can see light is actually really light and then from anything from there you would increase the smoothing or reduce the clarity but in instances like this I think like the clarity should be reduced rather than the smoothing because it's the fact that you have a lot of texture going on more so than it needs to be smoothed out like so. And so that kind of like evens out that texture it looks really good. The other benefit of this is even on the arms, if we're trying to, you know, reduce that we're able to do it, but it still retains those highlights. You see, it just reduces that like specular, overly textural area where you know, you might not want all that detail. So you can control this separately. You can also run a separate one just for smoothing in a different uh, layer, which is good. Um, and lastly, I want to quickly mention, um, we talked earlier about what it would look like if we did it with the blemishes on. Very simply put, I'm going to go ahead and click on medium again, click on create. And then once it generates, I'm going to brush it in. Turn that on and off, and you can see same kind of principle. It's going to smooth it out. If I reduce the texture even more, you can see it's going to try and reduce the texture even more. And then ultimately what you do in this workflow 
is if you want to do the healing later, you can simply just use a blank layer on top, use a healing brush, and then go in and reduce some of the blemishes. So same results, just a different kind of way to get there. And I think personally, the results look better if you heal first. So there you go. And that should make the work a lot easier in comparison to seeing this and then trying to overheal, trying to retouch and making a mess of things. So this, I think, um, will actually help people because it makes the process of healing look more manageable and less intense because you're seeing less detail overall. So it's a win-win. Well, I hope that helped and uh, wanted to thank Kate again. Please check out her Instagram page at Envy Boudoir. And uh, we also cropped this image for YouTube purposes, but this was a boudoir image originally, and it still is, but for safety purposes, we made sure that we didn't get in trouble for YouTube. So I had to do a crop temporarily. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, please check out our description where you can see links to our groups, see links to Kate, and uh, just be involved in more of the community. We also have our Instagram page. We'd love to see you featured on. So please tag our account and use hashtag infinite tools. And uh, we look forward to seeing more of your work. And if you have any questions, please join our group and post it. We'd love to hear from you.